We continue with the 23rd chapter of the book of Shmuel. Shmuel, of course, is on the run, trying to escape from, uh, from Shmuel. David is on the run, trying to escape from Shaul, who uh, has, of course, threatened to kill him and tried to kill him numerous times. And David is trying to find some a safe haven for him to go to. And we start with chapter 23. David was told that the Philistines are raiding Ke'ilah and they're plundering the threshing floors. So David asked God, should I go and attack the Plishtim? You know, they're attacking my people, the Jewish people. Uh, you know, David, of course, here at this point is not with the Jewish people. Jo David has sort of uh, run away. There are Jews who, of course, as we said in the couple of last chapters, who have joined him in his battles and his fights against, you know, the embittered. But he's sort of uh, a little bit, um, in a sense, divorced, for lack of a better term, from the process. And so David wants to know if this is the right thing to do, if he should go and he should wage war against the Plishtim. And God says to him, go and fight and save Ke'ilah. The people of uh, say to him, you know, we're here in Yehuda, scared of Shaul. Right now we're going to go and we're going to attack the Plishtim. Then for sure, right? It's like we're 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 baiting uh, both enemies to come and to attack us. This is a ridiculous thing to do. We should just, you know, hopefully we can stay alive. So God says, no, no, just go. I will deliver the Plishtim to you. By Yosha David at Yoshve Kiila. And so they go, they follow God's God's uh, directive to go and to attack the Plishtim in Kiila, and that's what they do. And God delivers the Plishtim to David. He is victorious, he wins this battle, and he is able to defeat the Plishtim, as he has been told to many times before. And has done many times before. And now we're going back to the last chapter where the one survival from the city of Nov, um, Ev Yatar, the one who was Yatar, the one who's Yoter, the one who was left over, he's the only one who survived. And so it's saying that he is, he brought the Ephod, he brought, you know, he's now like, in a sense, like the Kohen Gadol, he brought all the stuff with him. And so it tells us that he brought the ephod with him. Word gets to, of course, all of a sudden the Philistines are there and they're being attacked by an army. Word gets to Shaul that David is there. God has delivered him into my hands. Because he shut himself in by entering a town with gates and bars. There are gates, there are bars. David attacked, he key. He um, has come and he's rescued the people of Keilah, but now we know where, where he is and we will go and get him. Saul summons the troops to go to war and to besiege David and his men. David knows that Shaul right, is planning to harm him and so now he asks Evyatar to bring forth the ephod. Let's go and let's ask God through the, the ways that Kohanim do it as to what we should do. Uh, next, God told us we should go to Ki'ila, but now that's led us into, in a sense, in a trap. So please, God, tell us what we should, should we do next. David says, God, Listen to your servant. What should I do? Saul's coming to Keilah. He's going to destroy the town because I am here. And so God, and he asks, are the citizens of Keilah going to deliver me into his hands, right? Yes, I saved them, but Shaul is coming to kill them. So what are they going to do? Should I just turn myself over? Is that what I should, 
Is that what I should do? And God says, you need to leave because the servants are going to, the people of Kila will turn you over to Shaul. He says, well, the citizens of Kila deliver me into Saul's hands. And they said, they will. We see, uh, you know, he helps them, but no loyalty. David is men, 600 of them. He's increased his number. We talked about the 400, the ace of. Now he's got 600 men. Shows he's, he's getting stronger. He's got a 50% increase. And they, they leave. They run away. And Shaul was told that David got away from Keilah. And so he did not go out to war, to wage war, to capture him in Keilah. David David was staying in fortresses and in the wilderness and hiding in hill countries and, and strong places. And Shaul searched for him constantly, but God did not allow Shaul to capture David. One time, when David was in a place called Choresh, uh, he learned that Shaul was coming out to come and to get him. But here, right, the pre we talked about in the past, Michal, Yonatan, the children of Shaul, who are caught in the middle because they love David. And here, Yonatan comes to David at Chorish and gives him Chizuk. He said, You know, my father might still try be trying to kill you, but God is with you. Stay strong. love, verse 17. He said, don't worry. My father Saul will never get you. You will be king and I will be the second in command. And even Saul knows it. And again, And so once again, they enter into a pact. David remains in Choresh. And Jonathan goes home by Alu Zifim El Shaul. So now the people he's in the midbar is in the wilderness of Zif, and the Zifim come to Shaul Hagivata Lemor. Hello, David, Mistateri Manu. David is hiding amongst us, but Mitzadot in the fortresses, Bachosha, Bikivata Licha, Asher Mimin Hayishimon. They tell him the exact place where David is hiding. So if you desire to come down, come down and we will help. We will give David over to you. And Shaul says, you are blessed. Baruch Hashem, you are blessed with God. Because you have shown me compassion. So go now and let's prepare. Look around and learn where he's going, what he's doing. Because I know that David is a very ya'arim. Here the word means cunning. He's very secretive, almost like Aaron means naked. So he's very, he's hiding, he's secretive. And so we have to know exactly if we're going to get him. We're in verse 23. And look around and figure out his hiding place, where he's been, where he's going to return to, right? Let's figure out if we don't get him there, we'll get him somewhere else. We'll know where he goes to. And I'm going to reign and I'm going to search amongst all the people in Yehuda and I will capture him. So the people go to Zif in front of Shaul. Hayishimon and David is in the wilderness in Ma'on, not far south of Yishimon. So Shaul and his men come to uh, to to find David, but David finds out about it. So David hears about it and he goes deeper into the midbar into the wilderness of Ma'on, and Shaul follows him into the wilderness of Ma'on. So Shaul is on one hill, 
And David's on the hill opposite him with his men. And David's trying to run away. And Shola's men are trying to encircle David and capture them. And just for a moment, when I see this verse, it takes me back to the battle with Goliath, the battle with Goliath, where they were, right? They were on hills and there was a valley in between and Goliath would come down and he would, right? He would scream at the Israelites. And here, instead of the Israelites fighting against their enemies, one hill against the next, they're fighting amongst themselves, all because Shaul, God has removed himself from Shaul, and Shaul is jealous and is, is just, he has transformed, sadly, into a shell of the person he once was. Verse 27, Umalach ba Shaul lemor, maharei, mahara, ulecha, kifashtu plishtim alaretz. But all of a sudden, a messenger comes and tells Saul, come quickly, for the Philistines have invaded the land. But Saul gave up his pursuit of David, and he goes to, to, to uh, go and battle against the Plishtim. And so this place was called the Rock of Separation because it allowed David to be separated and to make space between him and Shaul. And what we see in this chapter, and right, it's a continuation of so many of the things we've been, we've been looking at earlier, but we see in this chapter is this is again a moment where Shaul is, is just set his entire kingdom. He's not fighting his enemies. When it's a desperate situation and somebody has to go because the Plishtim are invading, then he has to go. But really, his troops should have been on the border. They should have been next to the Plishtim. They should have been going after David. And so at this point, Shaul's kingship, everything has fallen apart. And it's all fallen apart just because of David. We're not so far away from Purim, but in a sense, it's similar if we think about Purim. If we think about, right, Haman, who is this person of great power, and he loses everything because of his incredible hatred towards Mordechai. So there are sort of, you could wonder, mental health, different reasons as to why, but there seems to be, sadly, similarities between the two. And it's just, it's a very... Um, very upsetting sort of thing to think somebody like Shaul, who was such a wonderful, peaceful, kind person when we first meet him. And unfortunately, as things don't go right for him, he falls down this rabbit's hole. And it's something that he has at this point, little to no control over.